So Hildesun and Avers Dottir, welcome to the media box. You want to see financial intelligence units strengthened. Now, we already have Greco in the Council of Europe for the, the, against corruption. What more do you hope will happen as a result of this? Well, we're hoping to encourage our member states to strengthen their fight against money laundering uh, at a national level. So uh, using mechanisms of enforcement that are not available to international institutions such as Greco, of course, which cannot enforce the law really um, in the domestic legal field, let's say. Uh, and there are areas for international cooperation as well, which we do encourage in the report. But the main focus I would say is that we are really calling upon our member states to strengthen their domestic um, uh, intelligence units to, to ensure that we have a better, a better take on this huge global problem. Now, you would like to see more money actually taken back from the criminals. I mean, it's quite shocking figure, something like two trillion US dollars a year being misappropriated by crooks in some pretty nasty yes. ways too. You just want to, the authorities to really take some of that back for the public. Yes, what we criticize in the report and point out is that uh, this conversion rate, that is to say, uh, we have very, very many what is called suspicious transaction reports, uh, where basically uh, transactions that look suspicious are uh, reported to the appropriate authority, but very few of them, only 10% of them re result in actual investigation, further investigation, and only 1% of them result in conviction. And this is a, a, a shamelessly low number, and we criticize that we think mainly it, uh, this low conversion rate has to do with a lack of political will to deal with this issue. Uh, it's white collar crime, and uh, it is it is something that people have been turning a blind eye to for too long, which is a very negative thing because it, it directly affects the safety of our democracy. It directly affects the credibility of our institutions. Uh, and it is a very dangerous trend that we are allowing to continue that all this money, uh, instead of working for us, for our infrastructure, uh, for the public uh, good, it is going into the hands of organized crime, it is going into the hands of corrupt politicians, it is undermining our democracy, and it is increasing inequality in the world, and this is something we don't need right now when the faith in democracy is dwindling. Now, you mentioned that in your report that it, we, even with these suspicious transaction reports that, that are handed in, some of them actually come from financial institutions, but they go on dealing with the very people that they've reported for conducting suspicious transactions. It seems as if there's very little will on the part of the industry itself to put this right. Yes, this Fin, uh, fin Can, I always sort of forget how to, how to pronounce this, this Fin Can leak showed us that uh, these big institutions are still conducting transactions with uh, with companies that they believe are uh, conducting suspicious transactions. And I mean, what the FinTech, uh, FinChan leaks have shown us uh, and, and recent re revelations have shown us is that you have big financial institutions that are still conducting business with uh, entities that are not even sometimes known, but they, they are known to have these suspicious transactions and these huge financial institutions and banks continue doing business with them, uh, even though that they are filing actual suspicious transaction reports about them to the relative authority. So it, it shows us that um, even though we have rules in place, uh, they are, I think, a little bit just given some lip service and then not taken very seriously, uh, which I think is something that we definitely need to improve. You mentioned that it's white collar crime and therefore perhaps people don't see it as being as serious, but it's covering up some of the nastiest crimes in people trafficking, arms smuggling, drug smuggling, all sorts of dreadful things. And it, they're, they're hiding behind white collar crime. These are just innocent bureaucrats who are doing this sort of thing, but they're not innocent. How do you change the public mind about that and get the politicians to police themselves? Well, I think the public is on board with this. To be honest, I just think maybe it is a bit technical and obscure for them to um, be very cognizant of how important it is. But I believe that we've seen it after the Panama Papers. We've seen it uh, in general when when these big revelations come out about the hidden bank accounts of despots and uh, corrupt politicians, and obviously, of course, also uh, organized crime, that it enrages the public, and it is something that the general public doesn't have access to, these kinds of mechanisms, these kinds of hidden bank accounts in Panama, the Cayman Islands, or wherever it is. 
uh, it just shows how powerful this elite, uh, this group of people that has access to these kinds of measures is that nothing has been done about it. What has happened since the Panama Papers? Hardly anything. We had a revelation that, that most of the global elite have hidden bank accounts where they siphon millions upon millions, you know, they, they we're talking about trillions of, of money that should be taxed, of money that should be put to good use, and they're hiding it away in, uh, in, in good secret bank accounts away from the public authorities and what happened nothing because there is no political will to deal with it because the richest people of the world are using these mechanisms to hide their money and as long as uh, politicians depend on these people for their election funds and uh, their projects or, or whatever it is their trips to the bahamas then we're not going to see um big change in this matter. So I think it's very important that the public is on board, and I think the public is on board, but it's really the governments that should be acting, and it's really the governments that should be held to account, and we're hoping with this report to at least give them a nudge that uh, they should have political will, they should strengthen their financial intelligence units, and they should deal with money laundering, because it's a very serious issue, and it is something that will bite us later if we don't deal with it because as i say it is undermining our democracy it is strengthening the forces that want us to uh, go move away from democracy and if we want to maintain our uh, liberal sort of democracies where really we have human rights where we have freedom of movements and all, all of this then we do need to take this very seriously and start working together on a global scale, but also strengthening the financial uh, intelligence units, units domestically. Well, uh, Suna, I've asked to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed and good luck with it. Thank you.